Scheduling appointments, meetings, and resources. Have you ever heard the famous saying, no man is an island? Well, that phrase is so true today as communication gets faster, the world seems to get smaller, and people and systems are more integrated and interdependent than ever. Even in the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks, he eventually had to make friends with a volleyball named Wilson. Well, in this nugget, we'll look at extending the Outlook calendar for scheduling appointments and meetings with other people and resources. Resources like conference rooms, projectors, and volleyball heads named Wilson. In this nugget on scheduling appointments, meetings, and resources, we'll take up where we left off in the previous nugget on using the Outlook calendar as we look at additional and advanced features of the Outlook 2003 calendar. We'll also schedule appointments, we'll schedule meetings and events, we'll manage these meetings, we'll look at scheduling resources, and then I'll give you a list of additional things you can look at on your own time to help you fill in some of the gaps here with appointment meetings and resources using some of the tools that Microsoft has to offer. All right, let's do it. The first thing I want to do in this nugget, before we move on to uh, scheduling and managing meetings and events and resources, things like that, I want to kind of continue from the previous nugget looking at some of the calendar features, maybe some more advanced options here. Now remember earlier I showed you under tools options where to go to kind of have a different time zone configured. If you want to view your separate time zone, just right click on the time bar and choose change time zone and you can do that right here as if you are Remember, we, I had an HQ label and I had an Arizona label and I could switch time zones right here and of course choose swap the time zone button. Also, let's revisit these colors here. As you know, uh, these particular colors that are showing up here, if I double click on it, this blue means it's a business appointment, but we're showing the time as out of the office. What does that mean? Well, over here, on this little thin bar here. The purple means I'm out of the office. This blue stripe means it's a tentative meeting. So I have training plan from 11 to 12, but it's tentative. I could change that. I can slide this in any time of the day. If somebody needs me for a more important appointment or meeting, they can go ahead and schedule that. Uh, the white basically means that uh, if you double click on that, you can see it means I'm free. Yeah, I'm going to try to uh, make some personal calls on equipment orders, maybe follow up on my safe blueprint consultant during this time period, but I'm basically free for any meetings or other activities. The blue means that I'm busy. I'm in the office. I'm doing my security analysis and monitoring session, but I'm, I'm, this is a very important task, and I've scheduled it for 1.30 with my, some other people, so I'm going to be busy. So you've got out of the office, you see I've got a breakfast meeting here, which is a different type of appointment, okay? If you look at the color here, this appointment this breakfast meeting is a business meeting, but to show up at the job fair for an hour, that is, it needs preparation. So it's got different kinds of status, a different category, but they're both out of the office. I've got purple here on this, this little bar. So those colors can really help you get an idea of what types of appointments and the st free busy status uh, that you have during those appointments. Okay, let's look at customizing our current calendar view even more than we did in the previous nugget. I want to go up to view on the main menu. I want to choose view arrange by and then choose current view. Of course, under the current view, I can go ahead and look at my calendar. I'm looking at the day, week, month right now, but I can look at just the active appointments just the events, just the recurring appointments, or as we could in all the objects before, I can go and view these by category. I want to look at the customized current view area. In the two places I'm concerned with, first of all, we're going to look at filtering here in just a little bit. I want to make sure I have some actual meetings and different personnel uh, input into my calendar before I start filtering these things out. So we'll revisit this here a little bit later. I want to look at the other settings button and realize that here I can change my font. And again, I'm not going to do this, but you know, obviously from font to something that you like better, make sure it's readable. Uh, you know, you might want to get 
uh, you can get kind of crazy here, like rage italics, going to be really hard to read. So make sure it's something that's readable. You can change your fonts for the day, week, and month. What's interesting here is we can also change our time scale. Not only can we change our time scale on the time bar, we can also change our time scale here, which by default is 30 minutes. We can also do something that's showing the time as clocks. I'm going to choose this option and show you what I mean here. Click on OK. Go to the seven week, uh, seven day or the week button. You can see instead of showing, let's say, in actual numerals 10, 30, 12, 1, 2, 30, it gives me little clocks here. Personally, not a big fan of the clocks. Uh, I rather have just the actual decimals there. But uh, if you like, if you're more object oriented, you can use clocks here instead. I'm going to go back up to view and turn that off by going to arrange by current view customize current view and we'll go to other settings and we'll show time as clocks we'll clear that out also one other thing here if you'll notice over here on my particular date navigator I can say that I, I don't want to bold the dates in my date navigator I showed you that feature earlier but if you have events or items on every day which you, you most likely will have if you're a busy person uh, every day of the week and your work days Having them bolded is almost kind of just redundant. So I can clear that out as well if I don't want it to be bold. Click on OK. And those are some of the features uh, under the Customize view of the Other Settings button. And we'll revisit this and filter a little bit later on. I'm going to click on OK. And this goes back, of course, takes our, our clocks away and goes back to just decimals. Now, if you find yourself modifying this default view on a regular basis, uh, filtering things, modifying fields, it may be a lot easier just to create an all new view rather than changing this default view. You can go back up to the view menu, go to arrange by, and in current view choose define views. And these are the, the views we already have that you can choose from. These are on the pop out list, uh, day, week, month, events, annual events, and basically each one of these particular views is a subset. If I go to New and I choose, let's say, Custom View, I'll make a custom view and it's going to be on in this folder, the calendar folder, and you have to be in the calendar folder to do this, by the way, visible only to me, I can say that. I can choose, and again, all of these views over here are just settings from the Fields a button, from the Group By, from Sorting, which is, again, recurrence ascending, start ascending, end ascending, any filtering you might have, the font settings, so you can create your own custom view. Come in here, and I'm not going to do this. You can, uh, on your own time, kind of play with this and kind of create your own views. Change the fields, the groupings, sort them out differently. I'll show you filters here in a little bit. Your font settings, you can show the clocks instead of your decimal time. Uh, those kind of things. So uh, create your own custom view and you can go and pick and choose from that as well. That's kind of handy. We have users out there who aren't even running Outlook uh, 2003 or any version of Outlook. Maybe they're using some other scheduling program and they want to view your calendar. Uh, they can view it if their particular uh, calendar program, scheduling program, uh, can see a web page. So you can allow this to be seen as a web page by just saving your calendar to any web server. Uh, it could be FTP, it could be HTTP, and basically what you do is you just have your calendar open. Maybe I want to go to the month view here. Have your calendar open, go up to File, and just choose Save as Web Page. And then it gives you some options here. Choose the start date of your calendar and the end date. What do you want to uh, save as a web page? Do you want to include details on your appointments? Do you want to add a graphic to this? You want to give the calendar a title? Uh, Michael Shannon's schedule, for example, and then the actual file name. And I can actually open this in a browser right now if I want to by just clicking on Save. Once you save it with a file name, either to a local drive or to an FTP or a web server, you can now see this. And again, here's the URL, which this is a local file, but again, uh, for your third-party applications out there for web usage, 
you could just have a posted or an advertised URL to your calendar and then users can access this over the internet or through intranets by simply using HTTP protocol. Pretty cool. All right, let's move on now and talk about scheduling, managing meetings, appointments, and resources. Now, in addition to creating one-time appointments or recurring appointments and letting people know from your calendar when you're busy, when you're available, when your actions are tentative or out of the office, you may also be put in charge of setting up particular meetings for certain conference rooms in your organization, certain meeting places for events, maybe even online happenings as well. That may be your duty. You may also have to view other people's calendars to see if they're available for these different meetings and events. For the remainder of this nugget, we're going to look at scheduling meetings, at inviting attendees to those meetings, either within our organization or outside of our organization, and also reserving resources, again, like equipment and conference room or training materials. See, it's almost 3 p.m. on Thursday, June 3rd, and what I want to do is I want to plan a meeting on Monday morning, June 7th, with three individuals. This is going to be a rideshare program a meeting to kind of uh, design our campaign to get our employees to share their automobiles and again be more fuel efficient and cut down on cost and just be more environmentally aware. So I want to go and, and schedule a meeting if I can with Brian Cuban, James Johnston, and Connie Wong. Here's how I do it. I'll go over here and I'll just click on the date right here on the date navigator, Monday, June 7th. When I click on that, I can see right off the bat I have an appointment uh, from 1 to 2.30 with a security briefing in Conference 2. Uh, means I'm going to be busy, and this is one that I really can't change. So I need to plan this meeting sometime between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. if I can. Here's what I'll do. I'll go up to Actions, and I'm going to choose Plan a Meeting. And I'm going to get this very cool looking dialog box that will help me through the planning of a meeting process. Now notice up at the top, I'm seeing Monday, June 7th, 2004. That's what I want. Let's kind of move over here a little bit. Now I can see it shows me already my free busy information for myself. I'm busy at 1 o'clock, 1 to 2.30 in the in the conference room too with the security briefing. Now this is a little bit more than I want to see. I can always change the zoom up here and go maybe to like 75%, which shows me more of the day, or 150% shows me just this little time period right here, which maybe is the one I want. I've already jumped to, uh, to Sunday, June 6th. Let's go ahead and scroll over there. We go to the right. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go find and add other individuals from my organization to plan this meeting with. So I'll click on Add Others. And I'm going to add them from my address book, now I can choose here to say, look, do I want these to be required individuals? Do I have optional individuals? We'll talk about resources here in just a bit. But I want Brian Cuban, I need him to be there for sure. So I'm going to scroll down and see if I can find Brian Cuban on my list. Maybe he's at the top of the list. There he is. Select him and say he's required. Also, James Johnston is also required. There's James Johnston. We'll choose required. And then Connie Wong, she's going to be optional. So I'm going to choose optional for her. I want those three individuals. Let's click on OK. Now when I add them, you're going to see an icon right here that says that Brian Cuban with a little up arrow is a required attendee. James Johnston also required attendee. And then Connie Wong is an optional attendee. You can see also popping up over here this little uh, uh, icon is my instant messenger which will allow me to send do instant messaging with Connie or James or Brian and I could just use IM to contact them right off the bat and kind of in real time ask them their availability because if I scroll up here I can see that for these individuals uh, at 10 o'clock uh, Brian is tentatively busy he has tentative uh, between 10 and let me go ahead and get a, a better view of this here, the day view. There we go. I can see that from 10 all the way to 2 o'clock, he's got something going on that's tentative here. I can see uh, James Johnston's tentative between 10 and 11, and he got busy between 12 and 12.30 and so on. Connie Wong is no information. So she has no free busy information 
uh, on that particular user. Now what I could do is this, you've got to auto pick next and what auto pick next will do is this will basically kind of jump, jump to or find the next available free time for all of the attendees and the resources. And so you can choose this option and it'll find the next free time. So the next free time for Michael, Brian, James, and Connie is 8.30 a.m. on uh, Monday, June 7th. So I may want to go ahead and plan it uh, for an hour and a half between 8.30 and 10. Or if uh, James and Brian are flexible uh, after 10 o'clock, I can contact them. If it's 10 maybe they can move this around accordingly. So this really all goes into the process of planning, becoming more efficient, and really making that meeting uh, as effective for all individuals as you can in your organization. You can see how this free busy information is so important by using your calendar effectively and advertising that information on the Exchange server or the Microsoft Office 2003 free busy service or up on a website, it really creates power in your organization to create effective collaboration and to make your company much more effective. Hopefully you're starting to see the big picture here. So I'm going to go ahead and select from 8.30 until 10 o'clock by just clicking and dragging over that hour and a half period. You can see the meeting start time is 8.30 a.m. on Monday, uh, June 7th and the uh, meeting end time, 10 a.m. So without having to ask them to change or rearrange their schedules, I'll go ahead and pop that meeting right in here in this one and a half hour uh, window. And then I'll choose Make Meeting. Okay, I'm in the appointment area of this untitled meeting that I'm creating here with Brian Cuban, James Johnston, and Connie Wong. If I want to go back to the area I was just in, the scheduling tab right here takes me back to the area where I manage this. If I want to go back and add somebody else in here, maybe choose the auto pick and find an area in the afternoon instead after communicating with them through instant messaging or maybe phone. Go back to the appointment area. Again, the subject of this is going to be our rideshare program. So I'll just put in rideshare uh, program planning meeting. And the location, uh, I'm going to choose for location conference 2. Now I'm going to show you a little bit later on how to add and reserve resources. And for your resources to be something that you can actually uh, add to your meeting, these need to be mailbox enabled objects within uh, my exchange environment, my exchange organization. So I'm going to do that for some resources. Then we'll come back and create another meeting and we'll look at that again here. But I want to get to the basics of creating a meeting with people and personnel right now. I'll go ahead and label this as an important meeting. Again, the start times are fine. Again, once you make an appointment involve other people, that takes to the status of now being a meeting. Once that uh, particular thing becomes an all-day appointment or meeting, then it becomes what's called an event. I want to send a reminder uh, 30 minutes before, so at 8 o'clock in the morning when they come in, they should have a reminder on Monday, June 7th, that they have a meeting in 30 minutes. We also want to show the time during this that they're all going to be busy. Then I can also say, look, this is going to, if I wanted to, and this is not going to be an online meeting, we're actually going to meet in person in conference room too, but if I wanted to make this an online meeting, I have a variety of software applications I can use. I can choose this as an online meeting. Of course, once I do that, it changes my status, and up here it goes from just saying that the invitations haven't been sent to they haven't been sent, oh, and this is an online meeting. What software package am I going to use? Microsoft Net Meeting? Am I going to use Windows Media Services or Microsoft Exchange Conferencing, which is an add-on to the Exchange Server 2000 or 2003? Now, again, once I choose online meeting, I need to determine what server am I going to be using, maybe nugget1.nuggetlab.com. What's the email of the organizer? It could be me, M. Shannon, an, an administrator at my organization. I could also have other information like attaching an office document to this as well. But this is not an online meeting. This is well beyond the scope of this Outlook 2003 nugget. So I'm going to deselect that option, and I'll go ahead and click on Send. And when I do, it's going to send an invitation to Brian, James, and Connie about this meeting. Let's go ahead and do that now.
Okay, I've logged on to an XP machine as Brian Cuban. I'm in Outlook 2003 in his Exchange account, his Exchange client account. And you can see I have an email here from Michael Shannon saying Rideshare Program Planning Meeting in the subject area with a special icon with a calendar and a little uh, envelope on it. Now, when I respond to a meeting request as Brian Cuban, I've got four options. Number one, I can accept the request and I can tell Michael Shannon that I'm going to that I'm going to go ahead and attend that meeting, and then again it'll automatically go into my calendar as Brian Cuban. Or I can tentatively accept the request, and I can tell Michael Shannon that I might be able to attend. And if I do that tentatively, it's also going to go into my calendar, but my free busy information is going to show up as tentatively scheduled for that particular time period. Uh, between 8.30 and 10. I could also propose a new meeting time to Michael Shannon and uh, I could refer that back to him and then my calendar would show a proposed new meeting time and again as tentatively scheduled or finally I could decline the meeting it gets deleted and no entries made into my calendar. Now when I de decline a meeting I decide whether I want Outlook to notify the person Michael Shannon who sent the request to me. Let's go ahead and double click on this icon this email message from Michael Shannon. you can see it tells me to please respond and by the way this particular meeting request is adjacent to another appointment on my calendar so I may want to check my calendar to make sure for example if my other appointment is off campus or if it's someplace uh, away from my office do I have time to get from this meeting to the other appointment on my calendar so I want to I want to check that out. This is a really cool feature to show me that it's adjacent. It's from Michael. It shows who's required to be there. Michael wants Brian Cuban and James Johnson to be there as required. Connie Wong is optional. And the location conference room 2 is kind of added there uh, in a subject area. And again, I can, again, as I mentioned, I can accept this. I can say I'll accept it tentatively. Both of these are going to go onto my calendar. I can decline it all together and I can put a note in here of why I'm declining or I can propose a new time back to Michael Shannon. I'm going to go ahead and accept this and I get this particular dialog box. This meeting's been accepted and moved to your calendar. Do you want to include comments? Well, yeah. Let's go ahead and edit the response before I send it or don't send a response at all. Let's go ahead and send the response now. Click on OK. And there we go. It's in my sent items area. It shows up in my inbox as accepted uh, the meeting for the rideshare program planning meeting and now I've got a little calendar with a little check mark on it showing that I've accepted that. So a copy was sent to me and was sent back to uh, Michael Shannon as well. I have the ability to respond to meeting requests automatically. Uh, Outlook 2003 is going to process these requests and cancellations as they come. Uh, I can respond to requests. I can add new meetings to my calendar, remove canceled meetings from my calendar. So I can do this by going to Tools, Options. Here in the Preferences tab, I've got, of course, under the Calendar area, my Calendar Options. And now let's go to the Resource Scheduling button. We didn't come here earlier. We kind of skipped this. Looked at the Free Busy options. Looked at the Time Zone. Let's go to the Resource Scheduling button. As you can see, I can automatically accept meeting requests and process cancellations by choosing this option. It kind of kicks the automatic settings into action. I can automatically decline any conflicting meeting requests or I can automatically decline any recurring meeting request. Request. So I only want to uh, go ahead and accept one-time meeting requests that don't conflict with other meetings that I have set up. Now it also reminds me that if I want other users uh, to be able to view and edit Brian Cuban's calendar, and that's really a good way to, by sharing your calendar, you can allow other people to view your free busy information, your calendar information, to help them uh, better plan for meetings. It's one, day to, one thing to choose a particular day for a meeting and to find an hour and a half window for several people, but again, I might want to find out what day could I use. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to OK out of here. All right, there we go. 
OK, when I log back on as Michael Shannon in Outlook 2003, I can see I've got my accepted uh, from uh, Brian Cuban. I'll go back over to my calendar. And I'm going to choose here on the Navigator uh, Monday, June 7th. And I can see this Rideshare Program Planning Meeting there. I'm going to double click on it. Now I can see a new tab showing up. And it says one attendee is accepted, zero tentatively accepted, and zero have declined so far. But I still haven't heard from a couple of people. For example, in the Tracking tab, I can see that uh, I'm the meeting organizer. I'm not really worried about a response. Brian Cuban, who's a retire, required, not retired, but required attendee, has accepted. I'm still waiting on James Johnston and Connie Wong. Now, if one of these people does respond, like James Johnston, who's required and has declined for a particular reason, and he'll give me that reason in his email, I can go up to the Actions menu, and I can just simply choose to cancel the meeting. When I click on that, it's going to say, boom, and give me this dialog box. Do I want to send a cancellation and delete the meeting, or do I want to delete it without sending a cancellation? I'm going to go ahead and send a cancellation to these people and then delete the meeting, and then I'll just start over. Click on OK. All right, good job. Realize you can also share your calendar with other people in your organization uh, just like you would any other type of folder. And if I go up here to Calendar, I can right-click on that and choose Sharing. And we, I, get, I alluded to this earlier with other objects in Outlook 2003, but you can come in now and in the properties of your calendar, you can go in and add different individuals, maybe all my domain users. I can add them, click on OK, and I can make all my domain users, give them a certain permission level. For example, maybe I want to give them reviewer which means they can read items and the folder is visible, but they can't edit or delete any of the items in there and click on OK. And you've got several different permission levels. All of these different permission levels are just different subsets of these different objects down here, creating items, reading items, creating subfolders, owning the folder, uh, being a folder contact, whether it's visible or not, and actually being able to own any of the items, delete any of the items, uh, those types of things. So these are all subsets. We'll take a look at these things and get a good grasp of those types of areas. And again, I'll go ahead and share this folder with my domain users. Now, I mentioned earlier something about setting aside resources in your organization. Well, to be able to schedule a resource, that resource has to be attached to it uh, a mailbox. So it needs to be mailbox enabled within my organization. I'm going to take you over to my Exchange server now and show you how I can give that kind of identity to a particular resource in my Exchange organization. I'll meet you over there on the Exchange server in just a second. OK, I'm on my Exchange server Nugget 1, which is in NuggetLab.com. I'm using the snap-in for my MMC console, Active Directory Users and Computers. I'm looking at the users container. These are the, all the user objects, or recipient objects, in my organization. I've created here a different user accounts for my resources. I've got three conference rooms, conference room 1, two and three. I've got two overhead projectors that I use uh, that we can make resources available in my organization, projector one, projector two, and I've got three training labs, training lab one, training lab two. Let's create our third training lab. I'm going to right click on users and create a new user. It's not really a user, but it's a mail enabled or a mailbox enabled resource. And again, I'm using the, the pound sign here so that in the uh, grouping of these particular objects, they're not really user accounts or group accounts. I want them to be kind of grouped together and set apart from the other user accounts. Also, in the global address list that I have access to in Outlook 2003, I want them to all be grouped up with some kind of symbol. So again, this is going to be asterisk and I'll use the same kind of convention, Training Lab, and this is Training Lab 03. I'm just going to click and do a Control Copy, Control C, make that the user logon name. Now, why do I need a user logon name? Well, realize that I'll need to set aside some kind of resource administrator in my organization. The person needs to be able to log on to the resources mailbox, Training Lab 3. Uh, to set its scheduling options. And again, it'll actually have to have an Outlook 2003 profile and all those kind of things. 
uh, not to do this on a regular basis, probably only to do this one time, but you'll have to go through the process of creating that Exchange server account for this training lab resource like I showed you earlier in this nugget. So I need a logon name, click on next, no password, we'll just leave it blank, don't need to change the password but it never expires, we'll click on next. And the very important thing to do next is to make sure that it's got an Exchange mailbox created for it. That way I can have an Outlook 2003 profile and I can manage it as an administrator. Click on Next and then click on Finish. And we're almost done. The next thing I want to do is find that particular account, Training Lab 3. Make sure it's the only thing selected. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose Properties. Now what I want to do is I want to scroll down and find an Exchange Advanced tab. There it is, Exchange Advanced. And what I want to do right here is this. I'm going to click on Mailbox Rights and I want to make sure that I assign uh, to a particular resource administrator. So I can add and I can say, uh, I can go look for that person. Maybe that person is going to be Brian Cuban. I can just write that in here and do an LDAP search query for Brian Cuban. There's Brian, OK. And I want to make Brian Cuban kind of the full mailbox access. I can just go check all these things off and scroll down and give Brian the full access to this particular, he's the resource administrator for this particular training lab. And generally, it'll be the same individual who's the resource administrator for all these different uh, components. So uh, keep that in mind as well, that way to access security for that. That way Brian Cuban can come in and he can access that as a user and he can set up the Outlook 2003 account on that in its profile and go in and create that as well. All right, now once I've done that, I can go back now and create a meeting and I can add these resources and the availability of those resources right there into my uh, meeting creation aspect. Let's go back and look at that. Now if I go back to Monday, June 7th, and I can go ahead and select that 8.30 uh, to 10 period of time, first of all, then go up to Actions and Plan a Meeting, I can now go and add a resource by adding individual users, and then from my address book, what I want to do is I can find the users in here, but let's go up and click on this little down arrow, Show Names from the, and under the All Address list, choose All Users. That way I can see now at the top of my list with, an, with a uh, pound sign in front of it, I can add now as a resource conference room one, conference room two, conference room three, and based on the free busy information of these conference rooms, these projectors, these training labs, again, and the free busy information is available because I have that resource administrator who's gone and created an Outlook 2003 profile and account for that particular training lab or projector or conference room, I'll now have free busy information on the Exchange server and I can add this as a resource and I can see when it's available, when it's tentative, when it's busy and those kind of things as well. So a very powerful way to include uh, resources that are actually user accounts in our Exchange organization. Pretty cool, huh? All right, great job. Before we close out this nugget, here's some more informational resources for some of the things we talked about here in this particular nugget. For more information on how to get the most out of Microsoft Net Meeting, here's the Microsoft Net Meeting homepage and the URL at microsoft.com forward slash windows forward slash net meeting. Also, Microsoft Office updates can be found at office.microsoft.com. And then some more Outlook tips and techniques also at winnetmag.com, and you can follow up on this URL. In this nugget on scheduling appointments, meetings, and resources, we covered four main objectives. First of all, we want to do a kind of a follow through on some of the things we talked about in the previous nugget by looking at additional and advanced calendar features. We also looked at scheduling meetings. And of course, just by clicking the checkbox, you get an all-day event. We also looked at some of the organizational and managing aspects of those meetings and other individual users and their free busy information. And then finally, scheduling resources within an exchange organization. I hope this CBT Nugget's been informative for you. I really want to thank you for viewing.